we got the Piggy Palace Maximum. Now it says for mature audiences only, so you know what I'm saying. What they be saying on that shit? Your discretion of eyes, yeah, yeah. you feel me? That type of shit. Hey, you ain't trying to see nothing crazy here, nothing crazy. You know what I'm saying any of that. I suggest you don't even continue with this video. But you already know. Make sure y'all hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Other Mr. Ball videos really be dropped every day down there because yeah, I right. find it quite interesting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Real dope. But you already know. Hit that like button, subscribe button. Let's we'll see that video. If you have heard of Piggy Palace, the focus of today's story, then you know how horrific this story is. If you've never heard of Piggy Palace, well, viewer discretion is advised. But before we get into today's story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do and we upload three or four times every week. So if that's of interest to you, please set the like button up for a practice sales call with William M. Buttlicker. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly I'm trying to heat up. The uploads. All right, let's get into In 1949 in Port Coquitlam in British Columbia, which is about 15 miles to the east of Vancouver. He, along with his brother and sister, were raised by their parents on a big pig farm. In the 1970s, their parents passed away, and so the property was handed down to them. Robert and his brother took over the daily operations of the farm, and their sister decided to just move away. Over the next couple of decades, Robert and his brother attempted to run the pig farm, but pretty quickly they stopped taking care of it, and it fell into decline. Neighbors and visitors recalled seeing the pigs that were still there there, free roaming the property. And as for the brothers, it appeared they had just stopped bathing, and despite walking all day in mud and pig feces, it seemed like they never took off their boots when they went inside. One of the few farm workers yeah. that stayed with the Pictons through the farm's decline was a guy by the name of Bill Hiscox, and he said the farm was a really creepy place. And he also said Robert was a really creepy guy that was prone to just totally bizarre behavior, even though he didn't smoke or drink or use any substances. Eventually, the Picton and brothers realized they were not cut out to run the pig farm like their family had for generations before them, and they decided their best move was just to sell portions of their land. But neither of them could have guessed just how much their land was worth. From 1994 to 1995, they managed to sell off almost all of their property to an urban developer for over $5 million. And so suddenly these filthy, failed pig farmers had become millionaires, and neither of them knew what to do with the money. After Man. a year of just sitting on the money and not doing much with it, they decided they wanted to but do- that, that just goes to show you that money really not everything. Yeah, it's really not. And everybody really don't care about money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially a lot of money. If you, didn't, if you ain't really, I feel like a lot of times, like if you ain't really grow up having, and it's kind of weird, but if you ain't really grow up having and like caring about materialistic shit and having this, having it. It don't really matter. To some people. Yeah, to some people, but like, that's what you're saying. Yeah, but a lot of other people, of course, they gon' you know what I'm saying? They gon' clown type yeah, shit. Right. They ain't never had it. <laughs> what to do with the money? After a year of just sitting on the money and not doing much with it, they decided they wanted to do some good with their money. And so they established an official charity in 1996 called the Piggy Palace Good Time Society. Their charity's purpose, at least on paper, was to help raise money for various organizations that they deemed worthy by running events like dances and shows. And while that might have been their original intention for this charity, what it ultimately became was a guise to host these wild drug and alcohol-fueled parties inside of their slaughterhouse, which even though it wasn't being used anymore because they were no longer really doing any pig farming, it still conspicuously had big hooks coming down from the ceiling and bloodstains all over the ground underneath them. Them. These piggy palace parties yeah. became infamous in Coquitlam, drawing crowds of up to 2,000 people, predominantly bikers, drug addicts, and prostitutes from the poverty-stricken downtown east side of Vancouver. Robert had become familiar with that part of Vancouver because he used to go through there all the time to dispose of animal waste products at their rendering plant. Once the Piggy Palace charity was in full swing, Robert started going back into that neighborhood where he would cruise down the 10 block strip called the Low Track and would attempt to recruit people to come to his parties. Most of the people he recruited were down on their luck women who only agreed to go because he was offering them food and money and drugs and alcohol. 
At the same time Robert was running this recruiting campaign, women from the downtown east side began disappearing in droves. These disappearances were noticed by the men and women in the downtown east side, but they didn't report them because they had a general distrust of the police and of authority figures in general. But as more and more and more women disappeared from the downtown east side, rumors of a serial killer operating in that area started to circulate. Residents began only going outside if they could walk around in a big group of people, and everybody was just totally on edge, keeping careful lookout for anything odd about the neighborhood, people that shouldn't be there, cars that shouldn't be there. But despite this heightened security, women continued to go missing at a rapid rate and nobody knew why. When the police were finally contacted about all these missing women, their response was lacking to say the least. Since there were no bodies of these missing women, the police said it was reasonable to assume that the women were to blame, that their lifestyles must have caught up with them and they either ran off somewhere or perhaps they overdosed somewhere and their bodies just haven't been found yet. Despite residents of the downtown east side saying, no, this is different, there's something wrong here, the police basically said, we're not getting involved. When the newspapers found out about this totally apathetic response from the police, they criticized them for intentionally deprioritizing these missing women because the majority- And that right there just shows you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Police, it, it, it's a lot of police that do it to themselves. Don't nobody else do the shit. They do it to themselves. That's, that's the shit them no, for intentionally deprioritizing these missing women because the majority of them were drug addicts and prostitutes and so therefore weren't worthy of a full investigation. The police rejected this claim. On the evening of March 22nd, 1997, so one year after the Piggy Palace had been stood up and they started throwing all these parties, and one year after dozens of women have gone missing from the downtown. Since we were little, we've been inseparable. Don't vape, yo. But vaping felt side, the Picton's neighbor heard a frantic knock on their front door. They ran over, they opened it up, and what they saw was this woman who was hunched over with one hand on her bleeding stomach, and dangling from her wrist was a handcuff. The neighbor was obviously shocked at what they were seeing, but they quickly ushered the woman in, and they called her an ambulance. The woman was rushed to the hospital where she immediately was put into emergency surgery. Afterwards, while she was in recovery, she told her nurses that her name was Wendy and she had been at one of those piggy palace parties and one of the owners of the farm, Robert Picton, had tried to put a handcuff on her and when he did, she fought back, he drew a knife, he stabbed her in the stomach, she was able to get the knife back, she stabbed him in the face before turning and running out the door and making it to the neighbor's house. Right after she told this story, Robert Picton actually showed up at the exact same hospital with a serious laceration on his face that was consistent with being stabbed. The medical staff had already called the police who showed up minutes later and when they went inside, they searched Robert and they found in one of his pockets a handcuff key. And that handcuff key opened the handcuff that was still on Wendy's wrist. And so when the police saw that, they arrested Robert on attempted murder. While Robert was in custody, he explained to officers that Wendy was lying. She was a drug addict and she had come to one of their piggy palace parties and he had caught her trying to rob them. He had confronted her, she drew a knife, and that's when a struggle ensued and both of them got stabbed. And Robert said he was just lucky to be alive. The police believed him and dropped all of his charges and let him go. When Robert got back to the farm, Bill Hiscox, the one worker who still worked for the Pictons, he grew very suspicious of Robert. He had read all about the missing women from the downtown east side, and he knew Robert regularly went- Okay, I hope he's not about to say that bro is gonna stay there because me personally, I'd have probably just went to the car and said, hey man, all about it is that, that yeah. and, other, and I'm out. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going back to the farm because that's, that's how shit happened. You never know. Those snake gonna pounce on his ass. This of Robert. He had read all about the missing women from the downtown east side, and he know. knew Robert regularly went over there to pick up women and brought them back to his parties. And Bill just always had that gut feeling that something was off about Robert. And so he sat on this gut feeling for a couple of months until finally he decided he had to tell someone. And so he called the Crime Stoppers tip line and he told them that he thought Robert had actually attacked Wendy, not the other way around, and that actually Robert was most likely behind some or all of these missing women from the downtown east side. Bill also said that a recent female party guest at the farm had seen a pile of women's clothing inside of Robert's trailer, along with at least 10 purses and women's ID cards. The police followed up with Lisa to confirm what she saw, but she was scared of Robert and said she wasn't going to cooperate. 
And so the police, without this testimony, were unable to secure a search warrant to investigate this further. And so they kind of just forgot about it and moved on to other cases. Over the next few years, the Pictons continued to throw these huge piggy palace parties until the city finally shut them down. And dozens more women disappeared from the downtown east side without a significant police investigation, despite the fact that Bill was calling them all the time to say he believed Robert Picton was behind all of these disappearances, but they weren't taking him seriously. Finally, but, one, but what I'm trying to understand is if this was like in the news or in a newspaper when they said something about the police not doing their job with helping find these people at this farm or at this yeah. like palace or whatever from these parties, why is it still females going to the shit? Like I'm, I'm trying to figure out yeah. why is it yeah. like is the alcohol, you know what I'm saying, that good, the drugs, the drugs that, that good, that, hey, we drugs. get, you know what I'm saying, free this, free that. Bro, like, I, I just don't get this shit, but hey, we talking about back in the day, ain't we? Time to say he believed Robert Picton was behind all of these disappearances, but they weren't taking him seriously. Finally, in 2002, a former employee of the Picton farm came forward to police and said that he personally had seen illegal weapons inside of Robert's trailer. And this was enough information for the police to get a search warrant and raid the pig farm. And in February of that year, they did just that. And they found inside of Robert's trailer, the illegal guns, as well as several items directly connected to some of the missing women from the downtown east side. Robert was arrested, but let out on bail. He was put under surveillance and told he could not go back to the farm until they were done conducting a more thorough search. And during that more thorough search, they found blood from one of the missing women inside of Robert's trailer. And so Robert was rearrested and charged with murder. While he was being held in jail, he shared his cell with another man who he believed was just another detainee. But he wasn't a detainee, he was actually an undercover police officer, and their entire interaction was being recorded. And on the See, why don't they do that no more? I'm about to say, why don't they do that now? Because that's actually some smart shit. Because one thing it is, is you, you go under, I mean, it's dangerous, but if you yeah. go like undercover type shit to some of these like people, and you trying to find out some information on how you did this, how you did that. That is some smart shit. Yeah. Thank What's they be doing that one little show? What's that show called? Uh, I don't like the pit, but that's like a regular person. They ain't like no cop that's actually going in. Yeah. yeah, that's like regular people. Yeah, right. I never watched it like this. We can do those reactions. I, I think we can throw some of them reactions in too. Yeah, those are good. And their entire interaction was being recorded. And on this recording, Robert makes a few shocking statements. Should have been sloppy at the first one, G. He in there just spilling everything. <laughs> Talk about sloppy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
As Robert admits in this video, he killed 49 people, who would turn out to be the majority of the missing women from the downtown east side. After a lengthy investigation, it was determined Robert's killing spree began in 1991, but it really kicked up a notch in 1996 when he and his brother started Piggy Palace, because he was able to use their huge parties to lure more victims to his farm faster. And once they were at his farm, he would lure them into his trailer, where he would handcuff them, tell them it's over now, and he would enjoy inject antifreeze into them, or he would strangle them to death. Afterwards, he would move the victim's body to the slaughterhouse, where he would butcher them like a pig. A large portion of his victim's remains would be fed to his pigs, and the parts he didn't feed to his pigs, he would bring to the rendering plant in the downtown east side, which is not far from where the victim was most likely picked up. A rendering plant takes animal waste products, crushes them up, and turns them into a gelatin. This gelatin is used in many everyday products, from candy to cosmetics, which means... Which means... <laughs> so if I take this hand and smack the hell out this dude, I don't be wrong. I don't be wrong. You know what I mean? They ain't, they ain't, they ain't a threat. They ain't trying to get in trouble or nothing. But I'm, I'm just saying, though. I'll be wrong. Bro, there's some sick people out here. It make you not even want to eat nothing, bro. Cause you don't even know. I was gonna say, I'm like, what, bro? You talking about candy, bro? Rest in peace, all the victims. Though. I definitely gotta say that shit. That shit just wild, though. The most like, most I just don't. picked up. A rendering plant takes animal waste products, crushes them up, and turns them into a gelatin. This gelatin is used in many everyday products, from candy to cosmetics. Which means Robert's victims wound up in things like lipstick and gummy bears. Also, sometimes while Robert was going through this horrific disposal process, he would set aside some of the best cuts of meat and grind them up with pork and turn them into sausage. This sausage was served at piggy palace parties. It was also given to neighbors, and food banks and orphanages. After There's sifting no through 300,000 cubic meters of soy- uh, Them police, bro, I hope they heard this shit. I swear to God, I hope they heard this shit, bro. The police that- and food banks and orphanages. After sifting through 300,000 cubic meters of soil and pig feces underneath the Picton farm, investigators were only ever able to find little bits of remains of 26 women. Robert was charged with all 26 murders, but only six turned into convictions due to a lack of evidence. He was sentenced to life in prison and is still alive today. His brother and sister were never charged in connection with the crimes. So that's gonna do it, guys. If you found the secret in today's episode, let us know in the comments. Robert, shame on you. I just don't understand, bro. Like, I just don't yeah, understand. Yeah, what? Robert picked him. And they talking about Jeffrey Dahmer. This shit's wild. Yeah, I don't know. This shit's wild. Mm -hmm. Hey, right at the same. I don't same know. Point. Make sure I that like when hit that subscribe button. Uh, the difference is. Jeffrey, you know what I'm saying? He tried to get somebody to eat his food. Yeah. <laughs> he tried to get somebody to eat his food. This man got it at party. Edward. You know what I'm saying? Got it at parties. Everybody eating sausages and this and that, thinking it's from the pigs. And it's, it's from the pigs, but it's also from the people. Yeah, not just. That's wild. I don't know. That's sick. Make sure I hit that like button, that subscribe button, man. More videos going to be uh, dropped, so uh, make sure I stay tuned. Good job.